Welcome to Sprocket Man Designs everybody, hope you're all doing well. Um, if you're wondering what you're looking at, that is a Park Tools wheel train stand. Um, and today I am hopefully going to finish off building this here wheel. Now, if I can actually get it in the stand, there we go. What I've done so far with this is basically get the initial tension in. Uh, now I've just got to literally finish truing it up. Um, the term truing basically means getting it straight and square so it sits between the stays in the back of the bike correctly. The reason I say in the back of the bike, guess what, it's a rear wheel. Um, the magic of building wheels is, for me anyway, is I find it very relaxing. Um, the guy that taught me how to do it all those centuries ago was a lovely New Zealander by the name of Ed. Um, I met him in the very first workshop I ever started in. Um, hope he's doing well now. If you're out there, Ed Lappage, hope you and your lovely wife Hilary are both still happy. Um, yeah, and he described the process to me, <coughs> excuse me, as knitting with steel and aluminium. And that analogy has stuck in my head ever since. Um, if you're thinking the workshop looks a bit different today, that's because we're in the house. Um, I don't normally keep cacti in the carriage. Um, but the blowtorch does live in here because it's really useful for lighting barbecues and the fact that I've got a matching one in the garage is besides the point. So to begin I'm going to find the valve hole because it's always good to start at a datum point. And what I intend to do, because the wheel is currently sitting a little bit too close to this side, so I'm going to slacken each spoke on this side by a quarter of a turn and then tighten its opposite number by the same amount. With a bit of luck that will just draw it across and it will be an easy job. In order to make sure I'm getting it absolutely correct I have this strange looking device. Uh, this is a dish and gauge and that each end of it there and there sits on the rim and this point sits on the lock nut on the axle. The reason you've put it on the lock nut and not the axle itself, if the axle has been fitted unevenly it will give you a false reading. So doing it this way gives you the correct measurement unless somebody's put the wrong spaces in of course. Going well so far. Okay, I'll do one lap so you can see what I'm doing and then I will probably pause the camera because you'll get bored watching this. It can happen, it can happen. hope you checked out the final video or series of photos, call it what you will, of the phone charger. Um, I've got to say I was really happy with that. Um, spray quick's defi definition of satin black is definitely very shiny. Um, but I think it looked awesome. Periodically while we're in here, you might also hear a lot of dogs barking, although now I've said that, what's the better they'll do the, the unheard of and remain quiet. We own three dogs, um, a small yappy one, a medium sized, sometimes barks, absolute maniac, and a reasonably big brown idiot who's very loud. Um, I love them to bits, I just wish they had a mute button.
a nice lovely summer's day. What you can hear in the background is the skip company down the road. They're ever so nice and friendly and start making that row at 7 o'clock every morning except Sundays. Okay, what I'm doing now, just in case you're wondering, I've wound in the jaws of the caliper here, so they're running very close to the rim, and I'm just gently rotating the wheel to see if it's making contact, or unwanted contact, anywhere in its rotation. Where it does, I just tighten the correct spokes on this side, just to draw it away. There are people that say that they can build wheels without the aid of a jig um, and just using their bike frame. Um, good luck to them, you'd never find me using one of those wheels. If you're going to do a job, do it properly. Uh, right, what I'm now going to do is take the wheel away, drop it on an old bit of carpet that I've bought in and I'm going to press down either side of the rim with the hub centred on the carpet and press it down. What that does is just relaxes all the spokes into position. Before I do that, the next step is just to flex the spokes. Again, it's simply to bed them in. Positive side, it's not running out any, so let's see what happens when we put the alignment gauge on. Okay, so after flexing the rim against the spokes with the hub on the floor as I explained I was going to do, um, I've popped the wheel back in the jig and saved you the boring bit of watching me go around a couple more times. But what I've now achieved is the rim is centred pretty much perfectly. Um, but for the quality of rim this, that this is, I'm not at all surprised, um, and what that means, time for a live action motion shot, hopefully. So there you can see the rim in between the caliper, and hopefully you'll be able to see just how close the caliper is to the rim on either side. Um, that combined space is around about two millimetres um, and when I rotate the wheel you'll notice it doesn't hit which is exactly what I'm looking for if I can get any wheel to within those parameters during a build I'm a happy day oops be even better if I watch what I was doing putting the camera back on its stand there we have it so all that's left to do is fit the rim tape which is in the boot of the car, I must go and get that now. Um, rim tape just protects the inner tube, or if you're running tubeless, it stops the fluid leaking out through the spoke holes uh, and valve hole. So I'll go and get that, get it fitted, 
small happily and I can deliver it to the customer which will be nice so running off to the car now I've remembered what I've forgotten back in a bit ok applying rim tape and before I start there's a big daft dog hi bear yes thankfully not shouting at them this time but the day is still young ok so let's make sure I've got this so you can mostly see it hopefully that will work out ok and it helps if I get a pair of scissors ok, if I was in the garage I know where my scissors are but I'm not, I'm in the kitchen, this is definitely my good lady's domain and I don't know where they keep them, so pocket knife it will be. For my next trick, like any good roll of tape, I'll find the end of it. And then get it started. Okay. When fitting a tubeless compatible rim tape, it pays to keep it under tension as you pull it, because then it will sit down better into the rim. It also gives you the option to knock out any air bubbles that may form as you go. Then the last step in the process is to just create the valve hole through the rim plate. There you go, it is as com complex as that. The advantage of using this type of rim tape over uh, a cloth one, one cloth one is completely useless when you want, if you choose to go tubeless, but the other side of it is this is much easier to pop the valve hole through because it's not as thick, it's not as fibrous, and it doesn't leave as much de detritus behind as you go. Right, that's it for this wheel. I think it's time to get it to its owner. Um, next up will be, if all goes according to plan, um, a good friend of mine has asked me to build him a very complex yet strangely simple looking 
pair of road wheels as opposed to this mountain bike wheel. Um, that will be Shimano Dura Ace rims and hubs with the specific spokes. Um, never built them before. Instead of using a standard 14 gauge spoke like that, they use flat bladed straight pull spokes which are tricky in their own right to work with. So that will be some fun. And I must also remember to not swear at all while I'm building them because I think they're going to be a fight. Looking forward to it though. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching me goon around a bit with the wheel today and see you soon.